What's up, everybody? It's Priyon Joni. So did you know that on a DJM S11 mixer that there are up to four pad modes for each pad mode button? The primary ones are obvious because they're printed right on the button. The secondary ones, the ones that you hold shift and click the primary button to access, are printed right below it. But when you're using Serato, you actually have a third and fourth pad mode button, and it's not printed on the mixer. So what I did was I created this image, which I call the DJM S11 pad mode guide, and I went through the product manual so I could label each pad mode function for the third and the fourth functions. I did this for both Serato and for Rekordbox, and I took the further step of highlighting each one to the specific color that it turns to when you're in that pad mode function. So I made this guide downloadable for you, and I made two versions, one that can be used as a wallpaper and another one that's square. So you can keep it on your wallpaper and just be able to quickly access it when you're trying to figure out the pad mode functions. But I'll explain how it works after a message from our sponsor, Direct Music Service. DMS is an online database for working DJs and mix artists. It's the one-stop shop where you can get your music from for your gigs. It's a searchable, organized database with thousands of edits, remixes, and different versions of your favorite tracks from many different genres. What's also awesome about Direct Music Service, if you're always on the road just like me, they have this awesome mobile app so that you can search your favorite tunes, put them on a wish list, and they'll be ready for you on your Dropbox folder when you get home. You can now save some money and get a discount using one of these two coupon codes. Use the code PJMONTHLY and get 30% off your first month off any monthly subscription. Use the coupon code PJ yearly and get 10% off your entire first year of any yearly subscription. Go to directmusicservice.com today to sign up. All right, so we have Serato open and we have our pad mode guide over here. And as you can see, there is a separate section for Serato and a separate section for Rekordbox. We'll talk about Rekordbox shortly since we have Serato open. So for your primary pad modes, where you click the pad mode button once, you got hot cue, roll, save loop, and sampler. And as you can see, each one of these colors are the colors of the buttons when they're engaged. So like hot cue is white, roll is a type of teal, so that's right there. And then save loop is a yellowish green with sampler being purple. Now for the secondary pad modes where it's press once holding shift, that would be when you click shift and for pitch play, it turns green. For slicer loop, it turns blue. For save loop, it turns green. And for scratch bank, a magenta purple pinkish. Now, if you notice right here, it says press once while holding shift. Now, what's this over here where it says multi-pad option press three times? Well, in the default function of the S11, just like on the S9, if you want to use the shift button to access the secondary pad modes, you use the shift button. So in the utility, you can go to performance, pad mode options, and there's this section where there's these two options called multi and shift. The default is shift. This option called multi is what we're talking about here where it says multi pad option press three times. So instead of using shift to access the secondary function, you can click this three times and we get to the secondary function. Now you can still use shift to access those but the multi allows you to do triple clicks and quadruple clicks. So we're gonna switch this back to shift. So on where it says press twice is actually the third pad mode option. There is a double click whether you're in shift or multi. So when you double click hot cue, it turns red and red stands for gate cue. The sky blue is the cue loop. When you double click the save loop button, it's actually auto loop on the top and beat jump on the bottom. The outer bottom pads that are more reddish orange, they are the beat jump link buttons. 
while the inside ones are the beat jump direction. So if you click this pad, it's gonna beat jump in the duration that you set. Going backwards, if you click this pad, it's gonna go forward. Double click the sampler button and it turns teal and it becomes the transport button. This is Q, this is play. This pad becomes your key lock while this one becomes the sync button. These buttons right here serve as your tempo slider. So basically if you're moving forward or faster and this one is backwards, while these ones, these first two pads are your pitch bend buttons. So if you're in internal mode and you go into the transport, you can completely manually mix and beat match simply using this mode on the pads without any DVS decks or CDJs. These third function buttons that require you to click twice are two clicks whether you're in multi or shift mode. Now there is a fourth mode. If you click shift and double click the primary pad mode buttons, they turn yellow. All four will turn yellow. And these are your four user modes. You can customize these pads to do whatever you want them to do. Now we can cover how to do that in a different video. Leave it in the comment section if you're interested in learning how to do the user modes. But these fourth functions, which are your user modes, can be accessed two different ways. It would be shift, double click. But if you're in multi-mode, it's four clicks. Now you might ask, what's the point of multi-mode over shift mode? Well, in DJ competitions, DJ battles out there, the competitors like to have one hand use of engaging different pad modes. And yeah, the shift button isn't really that far and is no issue for some people, but for others, being able to click the pad modes and get to the one you want very, very quickly with just one hand and no holding of another button. Having a double click, triple click, and quadruple click is a lot faster, especially if your hand is busy, your other hand is busy doing something else. What's cool is with the S11, you have both options, but I personally keep it at shift mode. So that's what all these colors mean, is the color of what they turn into when they are in the mode that is printed within them. The secondary modes are a hold shift and click the pad mode button once, or you click them three times. While the third mode is click twice, no matter what. And the fourth modes are hold shift and click twice, or when you're in multi-mode, click them four times. Down in the comment section below, I'm also leaving product links to the DJM S11 and the CDJ 3000s if you wish to purchase them. I'm referring you to Zounds because they have the best payment plan program that you can find online. It's one of the easiest payment plans to get approved for online if you're ready to buy a setup today. So in Rekordbox, it's a little different because there's only a primary pad mode and a secondary pad mode. All the primary pad modes are all purple and the secondary ones are all yellow. Now what's printed for the S11's pad modes is based on Serato. Record box is actually different, so the only things that match up is hot cue and sampler. So this guide will be really useful for knowing what the pad modes are for record box on top of the colors that they are, which is only purple and yellow. So the first one is hot cue. The second one, even though it says roll, is your pad effects one. Third one is beat jump, and the fourth one is sampler, which is matches up on the S11. For the secondary ones, which are yellow, you hold shift, hot cue becomes keyboard, roll becomes pad effects two, save loop becomes beat loop, and scratch bank becomes key shift. And once again, just like in Serato, if you're in multi-mode, you can access these by double-clicking. Now, here's what's cool about Rekordbox. While in Serato, it gives you four different pad modes that are user modes, 
But what's cool in Rekordbox is that you can change all eight of your pad modes, whether it's your primary or your secondary, and you can customize, change them, or reorder them to however you want by using the pad editor in Rekordbox. Also, let me know down in the comments if you wanna learn how to change the pad modes in Rekordbox. So I hope this guide will help you remember your pad modes, especially the ones that aren't printed, which are your third and fourth pad mode functions in Serato, as well as all your pad mode functions in Rekordbox. Feel free to keep this guide on your wallpaper or just a file on your desktop, just so that you have quick access to be able to remember what your pad mode functions are. All right, well, if you got any comments, questions, or anything to add about what we talked about today, please leave them in the comment section below. We'd love to hear your thoughts, answer any questions, or learn anything new that I haven't covered in this video. If you like this video, please smash that like button. And if it's your first time here and you found this video useful, please click that subscribe button and don't forget to click that little bell icon so you get a notification the next time I upload a video. Don't forget to add me on Instagram where I do sneak peeks and teasers of my upcoming videos or cover content that I don't normally cover here on my YouTube. All right, thank you for watching, take care and stay healthy.